All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us again this afternoon. Um, this is um, this evening is evening here in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, where we have myself and the speaker today. And um, but before we go on with this session, I would like to quickly do a bit of introduction about what Maltic is and what we'll be discussing on today. And then at the end of today's call, um, after that, we'll be having the um, speaker who is already here taking us through this session. Okay, so quickly, let me do a bit of introduction about today and what Mautic is all about. So I want to welcome everyone for joining us. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be part of us this evening. And um, quickly, um, if you need to talk to us or if you need to ask questions, please use the chat option. There's also the feature for question and answer. Please do use that to ask your questions. We'll be making the recording of this session available on YouTube. So please go on YouTube, search for Mautic Meetup Lagos and subscribe because you can be able to watch all our past sessions and also this session will also be on YouTube. And then also after today's session, please join the lounge where you'll be able to interact with the speaker and myself, the host. And then you can also be able to get more to know more and also be able to meet new people. Okay, so in case you are joining us for the first time and you might be wondering what is Mautic all about? I've been hearing Mautic. Sometimes people think Mautic is an um, email marketing software just like MailChimp. But Mautic is much more than that. It's a marketing automation platform where you can be able to self-host yourself and it helps you to effectively personalize the digital experience of your customer throughout their journey. All right. So um, what can you do with Mautic? You can be able to use it to build landing pages. You can build web forms. You can add dashboards. You can be able to use it to do um, A-B testing. And then also email marketing is part of what you can do with Mautic. You can also do dynamic content. You can be able to communicate with people on multiple channels. So you can be able to channel, communicate with people on email. You can communicate on SMS. So some people have been able to integrate WhatsApp. So you can be able to send automated messages from all of different channels that will be helpful for your business. Okay, so this is an open source project and it's completely free to use if you are self-hosting it. But then it, it takes the effort of people within the community to be able to make this available to everyone. So we would like to see you contribute to this project. Okay, but then I will please do go to more mau.tc forward slash contribute and then you can be able to find different departments so where you can join. So the community, the education, the marketing, the product team, these are different things you can be able to contribute. So you don't need to be able to code before you can be able to contribute to Mautic. Just be involved in any of the other one that doesn't have to do with coding. It can be testing, it can be helping with marketing, which I'm currently the team lead. So if in case you like to participate in the marketing team, please do reach out to me. I would love to have you on the team. Okay, so join us on you on our different channels. So on Meetup, most of you might have been able to join through Meetup. And if you're able to join directly to end it, please make sure you are a member on Meetup for Meetup, Mautic Meetup Lagos, Mautic Meetup Lagos. And then also do join our Slack channel and also our YouTube channel so that you can be able to get notified of new videos and also watch previous videos from our previous Meetups. Okay, so in case you're looking at where you can be able to get more help on Mautic. So you can use the Mautic forum to get more help. So please, um, we advise you use the forum, not the Slack and not the Facebook group. Okay, so wh why you should use forum is because forum is is the the mess the, the post there are uh, uh, search engine friendly. So it means it can be picked up by Google or any other search engine. And also, when any other person is trying to ask similar questions, they get to see a notification saying ask suggesting your post to them because you've asked similar questions in the past. So it's easy for everybody to be able to communicate. So the Slack is for team communications. Okay, so maybe the product team, the marketing team, they need to communicate. So that is what the Slack is all about. So we don't want you to use the Slack channel for asking questions or product knowledge relating to Mautic. Okay, so in case you are looking for where you can learn more about Mautic, so the Mautic um, knowledge base is almost reaching, reaching its launch phase. Okay, so anytime from now, you should see the Mautic knowledge base launched, but you can still be able to access these different resources 
that can help you to improve on how to use Mautic and what you can do with Mautic. So please do follow Mautic on our social media channels at Mautic Community, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We also have a Facebook group, Mautic, on, and then also on LinkedIn, you want to follow Mautic Community. Okay, so in case you would like to speak in our future event or you like to give us some feedback, please feel free to reach out to me. My name is Oluwa Tobi Olabi. You can reach out through my handles on Twitter. I am also on Facebook. And then you can also reach out to Favor for Class 6, who is also be able to assist you. Okay, so um, our next meetup, just be on the lookout. It's going to happen again soon, hopefully next month. So if you like to speak, please reach out to me. Okay, for today, we've been able to go on to talk about one more thing is we've done some housekeeping and then let's quickly look at the topic for today so i really really want to appreciate um john kachi for joining us today um thank you so much john for taking so much um out of your busy schedule to be part of this today all right so john you might want to unmute um quickly john is a very versatile person who has been able to work with email system a couple of times and has been able to host a couple of emails application himself so john will be taking us through how you can be able to set up your own smtp which is a postal step-by-step -step process connecting it with Mautic, and then also how you can be able to go ahead to make sure that you have your ip um, on the good list okay so john is experienced in all of this he's going to be sharing with us on all of this this evening and um john hiding i'm fine okay great so welcome you can share your screen the floor is yours yeah thank you very much good, good for having me so undoubtedly i'm so 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 super pumped today for this invitation and undoubtedly i'm going to be taking us to the process of setting up an SMTP server using your own mail transfer agents. And one good thing about um, this meetup or this um, tutorial that I'm going to show on my screen now is that just like Mautic, um, Poster SMTP is also open source, unlike um, other mail transfer agents like PowerMTA. Because the last time I checked for the license of PowerMTA, if you want to get the legit license, um and not the crack version you are going to be paying nothing less than twelve thousand dollars for the license it's like yearly license or something but it's not just a one-time license and i do think for newbies um if you want to start your own email marketing um campaign or you're a small business i want to run campaign to your blog subscribers i don't think using power mta is a good option for you so that is why i just find it um um productive for small businesses to to opt in for any open source uh, SMTP uh, mail transfer agent such as Poster. But for me in my own business, there are a lot of there are a lot of um, um, mail transfer agent out there. But for me in my own business, I've I've used the um, Poster for over if I'm not mistaken, I've used Poster for like three years now, and I can vouch for Poster that the even the team that are behind Poster, they are actually um, great people and they are also backed by a lot of team of developers and I do think uh, anybody starting out is an email marketing campaign should try checking out Poster because Poster is very good. So first of all in order to set up an SMTP server you need two things you need a domain name then you need a DPS machine where you are going to just like web hosting anytime you want to host a website you're going to need the domain name and the um, and the web hosting account, and these web hosting accounts always come with an IP address. It always comes with an IP address in which, when you query the IP address, you are going to get all the directories in that in that host. The same thing with uh, with setting up your own SMTP server. Uh, when setting up your own SMTP server, you also need a VPS machine or um, yeah, a VPS machine or maybe a dedicated server. But since you're always a small business, I do advise you go for a VPS ma machine. So and before you go for a particular VPS machine, there are some criteria that the VPS machine or the VPS issuing companies, some criteria that they have to meet before you 
you can use a VPS machine for mailing. Because these days, there are a lot of spammy emails going around on the internet. So most of the web hosting companies, they don't, uh, they, will I say they found it um, at loss or maybe counter profiting to um, sell servers, to allow their servers to be used for, for mailing. So, um, so technically, not all email, uh, not all web hosting companies that sells VPS that you can buy their, that you can actually buy their VPS for, for setting up your own SMTP server. So, before you buy any uh, any VPS server, you need to first of all contact the support of the VPS hosting company first of all to ask them whether their port twenty five is open. Because port 25 is what actually because to communicate, to do any kind of communication on the on the internet, like surfing the web and all those things, they are posts in charge of all those things. So for you to send mails via the internet, you actually need to be connected for port 25 to be open on your VPS machine. So and I've done my research, and this is the company that we are going to go with in this tutorial. And I've actually done a text server so that people can see how poster actually look like in real life if i say poster i just hope everybody see my screen poster dot quick i think quick beautify.com so i'm going to take us through a tour so that you can see how poster smtp server how the environment look like then i'm going to reinstall this operating system and perform all the operations starting from the beginning again. So the email address I use for setting up this, uh, this is my own server actually. The email address I use for set is setting up this is um, nanajohn2018 at gmail.com. Then I have my password. Then I can log in. So immediately you log into Poster. This is what Poster is going to greet you with. You can say, remember me for two months. That is, if you want to be logged in for two months, this is my organization. But when you first uh, install post SMTP server on your VPS machine, you are not going to see my organization. You are going to have the flexibility of creating your own organization. Then look at my first mail server here. You also have the flexibility of building your own first mail server. For instance, this is what you're going to see the first time you log into Poster. Build a new a new mail server. But I'm going to click on this. So this place we have routing, you can route to an external email, you can add a custom domain, you can add more than one domain, just like what email marketing companies are doing. For instance, I added quickbeautify.com, I can add another separate domain, just that they are going to be um, um, they are going to be using the same IP address. And when you're using um, different um, domains on the same IP address, the uh, if you don't manage the IP very well, the the IP is bound to be on a blacklist. So that is why I always um, advise small businesses to always go in for, um, if, you, if you just want to add a domain inside your, inside your poster SMTP server, you should just add just one domain and just use that particular domain for, for your mailing and your authentication and all. So the, um, the next thing that we need for setting up this VPS server is um, a domain name. For instance, the place I bought my domain name for this tutorial, the place I bought my domain name from is, is um, Namecheap. And you can actually buy from any web hosting um, company at all that you want to, you didn't feel to buy your domain name from. So, but for me, I bought my own from Namecheap. And I do think Namecheap Chief's uh, interface is also very friendly. All you got to do is to come to this advanced DNS part and you'll be able to manage your DNS record. So without wasting much of our time, let's go back to OVH Cloud. So this is the place I bought my VPS server. And what I want to do now, I want to re reinstall this VPS server. I want to reinstall it on Ubuntu operating system. Just like the way we have Linux, we have said, we, we also have Ubuntu operating system. And I'm going to build um, this um, server now on Ubuntu operating system because um, uh, will I say that since post a poster team, like recently, the um, the they incorporated uh, docker in the ins installation of poster which is actually a very good thing because docker uh, already have a, a lot of containers free coming with it and uh, once you once you run some simple 
lines of code, you're going to get everything up and running. You're going to get your poster server or SMTP up and running. So all you've got to do is here, I want to reinstall my operating system so that once I reinstall my operating system, you're going to see that this poster SMTP server, this site is not going to be reachable again. Like now, I just refreshed it. It's, a, it's actually still reachable. If I come here, if I, if I, if I click, you see that everything is still secured. Connection is secured. So... Uh, what I want to do now, I want to go and reinstall this VPN, reinstall it on the same Ubuntu, or maybe Ubuntu 18.04, Ubuntu 20.04, for anyone. But any, any anyone actually is going to work reinstall. Just click on reinstall. So this is the place where um, I'll be able to uh, choose the kind of VPS architecture that I want to um that i want to install that i want to um install on this um on this account if you if i come down um what i need is ubuntu 18.04 um then i can click on confirm now immediately i click on confirm now the email address i use for buying this uh, dps server yeah, look at this DPS. This is the name of my DPS will be reinstalled. Then if I go to the email address which I use for purchasing this DPS, I'm going to get all the details sent to that particular um, email address, including the access password I'm going to use for um, accessing um, this particular DPS via command line, or maybe if I want to use um, maybe any file transfer protocol, like a FileZilla, I can actually use the same login to login. All right? So... If we go back now and refresh, you see that this site is not going to be reachable again. Unless it's not going to be reachable unless um, the couch is still working. As you can see, this site cannot be reached because by mere installing the operating system on this server, what I'm actually doing is that I'm actually removing all the installations, all the installations that they've done on this VPS server. All right. So this is where our work is going to start now because um, this, v this VPS server now is now new. It's just like a new VPS server that you just bought. Um, let me go back. Uh, though, let, let me just walk you through how you can be able to purchase your VPS. First of all, you can come to the Meta Cloud. You can come to this. You can come to Virtual Private Server. If you come to Virtual Private Server, you can be able to see I did this because I already have everything pre-installed on my server. That is the reason why I had to reinstall everything to make sure that there is no more installation on my VPS server so that I can use the same VPS server for this tutorial. So, but for you, you are meant to create an account. Um, for instance, you have to come here. You, you have to go to OVH Cloud. You have to go to OVH Cloud. Then... Come here, order, just click on order, just click on virtual private server. Once you click on virtual private server, you're going to be brought to this place. So this is the place that you can be able to buy anything you want to buy, that you can be able to buy the VPS architecture that you want to install your SMTP server on. For instance, you can go with um, this uh, startup plan, $3.5. You can go with $5.5. You can go with $10.5. Anyone, depending on the size of your list and the strength of your... Um, and the and and will I see how huge or how your budget is at the moment? But I can attest that um, any of the plan actually will work. It's just that the performance are going to be reduced. You get, uh, for instance, if you want to send using uh, this five point five two dollar plan, I think like uh, a list of ten thousand. It can take you like ten to fifteen minutes to send. But if you're sending using a three point five a dollar uh, plan is going to take you like 30 minutes before you can send. So it just it just boils down to a matter of performance and what you want to configure on this VPS server. All you got to do now is to click on order. As you can see, it's going to load the OV, OVH control panel. I don't know my my network is is too bad. Um, then this is the plan that we pre choose. Then you can come back. Um, I just want to install my poster SMTP. I don't want to install it, install it with application. But um, you can actually do install it with application. Maybe you want to install um, it with um, a, a C panel so that I can be able to receive email 
inside your cPanel, all right? But since poster, you can also wrap an email inside poster. I don't, um, I, I don't find it cost effective to also use a distribution with application because why, why won't you use a distribution only when you can actually reroute your emails inside poster and get it to an external server? That is why, that is the reason why I'm choosing distribution only because I don't want to install it with an application. So here now you have to choose Ubuntu. So then it's going to pop up. Um, uh, it's going to bring out the, uh, or pop out the the different versions of Ubuntu. You can actually choose any one depending. This is the latest version of Ubuntu with the less the less stability, um, because um, the newer the version of the Ubuntu, the lesser the uh, the less the stability. So uh, if I choose eighteen point zero four. 18.04, you can come down, you can click on this, load, you can click on continue. Or don't add, if you go back, let me try going back. Let this thing load first before I go back. If I go back now, you can see snapshot. So don't add, it, this is just like um, you telling OVH Cloud that you want um, yeah, a mirror of your server, like for OVH to keep a mirror of your server so that I can, you won't be able to lose anything on your server. But I don't think you're not going to lose anything. Is your business and you, um, yeah, you are not going to lose anything actually. Just click on continue. Once you click on continue, you can click on continue again. Thank God the location that we chose is zero task. Then this is just, you can just put in your billing address and everything, click on continue, make sure you check out, add, add your card, make sure you check out. That, that, that is just it about, about buying your DPS. Then you can come and buy um, your domain name, maybe on Namecheap on GoDaddy or anywhere that you want. So after this, let me try going back. Let me try going back so that we can be able to start in NS. So let me go back to my account. Continue to control panel. Remember that as we are going now, we already reinstalled our VPS. We already reinstalled our VPS. So what we are going to do now is to go to the email where um, that we use for buying this uh, VPS server. We'll be able to get our login details there. So if we go to the email, I think uh, I've already opened the email. If I refresh. I think if I refresh, I will be able to see it. So this is the new details that I can use to connect to um, to my Linux machine remotely via uh, command line. So all I got to do is to um, if you're window, uh, window, window, like now I'm, I'm doing this, uh, this on Mac, um, on Massing Touch Operating System. I'm doing this on Mac, but for window, uh, Windows Operating System users, you can, the, the way you can uh, access a Linux machine, you can use a lot of software to connect remotely to your VPS so that you can be able to install this poster SMTP successfully. So all you got to do, if you if you are on a Windows machine, all you got to do is um, head on to Google. You can do a lot of software, SSH software that you can use, but for Windows users, you can actually use a Putty, Putty server, or just go to putty.org, or just type Putty, I think putty.org. So then you can click on download Putty. Then it's going to bring you this website is going to this Putty website is going to redirect you to the to the best installer uh, depending on your the operating system or okay this one is for 62 bit this one is for for 32 bit you can download it if you're a Windows user um, then for Mac we can actually also use Putty on Mac just that the installation process on Mac is will I say is more demanding than Windows because all you got to do if you're a Windows Windows user is just to download the APK file and just right click run as an administrator uh, as an ad administrator and you'll be able to install your install your putty and connect to your Linux machine and install your poster SMTP server. But if you're on Mac, you have to do some pre-installation. For instance, um I think there was a time I tried uh, installing there was a time I tried installing uh, Putty 
Uh, just that you have to install some kind of things before you be able to install putty you come to this place and click on putty you see that this this guy already have to load before put it can get catch up all right do, do you want to terminate running process in this window yes yes you see exactly so this is what put ssh look like if you're a window user all you got to do to access your vps machine or the vps already bought at from ovh cloud you just have to type the ip the IP of the VPS. Let me go back so that I can be able to see the IP. Uh, this is the machine that we bought. Immediately you 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 finish paying for your VPS server, they are going to send you the login, the login details of the VPS machine, just like the way they sent us when I reinstalled the VPS. All right. So this is the VPS that we bought. This is the IP address of the VPS that we bought. You can actually copy this. You can copy this and or I think for Mac, you have to type it manually. Just try typing it manually. I think 51, 51 So 195. Then just type the strings of numbers, then click on open so that you can be able to open. Then you can add your password and you'll be able to log in to your command line. But since um, Mac already uh, came with a um, uh, command line, I don't necessarily have to um, use putty, all right? I don't necessarily have to use putty. All I got to do is to go to my Mac terminal. Terminal. Let me check my Mac terminal. Oh, so all I all I have to do now, okay, I'm already on my Mac terminal. I want to close this terminal. I want to terminate this session. So I want to start to restart a new session. This is the Mac terminal. Then all I, all I got to do now is to... Since I want to connect to a Linux machine, this is um, an SSH something. So I have to type SSH. You do backspace, then you can put in your username, the username of that VPS. Like if you come to this page, you're going to see um, the username is Ubuntu. If we come back to that email, you're going to see um, Ubuntu operating system, Ubuntu um, as the username. Then this is the password. All you got to do is to copy this username copy you can paste it here then you can put shifts at uh, just know that um if you want to connect to a linux machine maybe you are in your university and you want to connect to a linux machine to do your assignment you can actually impute the the email the particular email in the linux machine that you want to access into but since I don't want to access an email, I want to access the Linux machine, all right? All I got to do is to impute the IP address of the Linux machine here. So I have to go and look for the IP address of the Linux machine or the VPS server that I want to, that I want to connect to. So this is, the, this is the, um, uh, the IP address. So all I got to do is to paste it here. I think as, as we wait for these guys to reply, let me talk about um, email deliverability. How you can get how we can get our email inside the inbox. So after setting up our SMTP server to get our emails in the inbox is to warm up our SMTP server. So warm up the way warm up works is um, is the process of building a reputation online because after setting up your own SMTP server you um the smtp server or the ip address is just a virgin ip address and nobody freaking know the ip address on the internet so warming up is just a way of telling uh, email service providers like gmail yahoo outlook or hotmail that uh, hey that this is my smtp server please allow my my uh, my emails to pass to your firewall and access your inbox so how are you going to build these trucks of your email service provider for them to be able to allow your your emails to enter into their inbox the first one is the sending score you have to configure there are a lot of technical details assuming these guys are already responded um, i'm going to show you the technical details the first are the technical details that you're going to configure the first one is um, the sender policy framework um, the sender policy framework is just a way of you authorizing email servers that are allowed to send emails using your own domain name all right so for instance you cannot um send emails using a, a 
Facebook uh, domain email, maybe uh, mail at facebook.com. Your emails are going to land inside the spam folder because it is not your domain. And the only people that have access to that domain name, facebook.com, is only facebook.com. And hence, you cannot authenticate your emails very well without having access to the to to Facebook domain email. So the first one um, on our list, um, understanding sending score. We are going to have um, uh, set SPF. That is sender sender policy framework. So the next one we are going to have is the the DCAM. So the DCAM is um, is also a, techno a technology that you can also implement inside your server that can help your email to, la to land inside the inbox. And what this do is like a way of you signing any email that is being sent out of your server. You are telling email service providers to sign it. You are signing it inside the server so that uh, when you send the email, when the email leaves your server, so that the receiving server can validate it with a particular key to make sure that to make sure and protect the originality of the email, to make sure that the email that left your server is the email entering the recipient uh, end of the spectrum. So that is DKIM. DIM. And aside from DKIM, we also have a reverse DNS. We also got to con uh, configure um, reverse DNS. So configuring reverse DNS, you have to do this uh, either via the command line or through your domain register account. Then I think let's go back to my name chip account. So I'll first of all get rid of all these things that I did here. I can select everything. I can choose an action, remove. So what we have to do now is to add a, a record, uh, which is um, an A record. And this A record is just a way of you pointing a subdomain, a subdomain to the IP address of your postal VPS. For instance, if you go to this page, we are going to see our IP. If you copy this IP now, you can come back here. Um, then you can paste this IP, Control V. Then this, this is the place you are going to uh, put your host name or the the subdomain that when they query this particular IP so that they can be able to locate this particular server. So this one is for the domain name system. We are still going to configure the reverse DNA, which is just the opposite of what I just did here. This is just pointing uh, this particular server, this particular subdomain to this uh, IP address. If I click on save changes, this is going to get saved. Then what I'm going to do now, okay, let me just say change this to mail. Let me just say mail. Save changes. Then I can come back to OVH Cloud. I can come to IP. You can come to edit. Then I can edit this domain name. I say mail. As you can see, they said our reverse part has been updated. And what are the reasons why we are updating this reverse part? We are updating the reverse part so that maybe when you send an email from an, a particular IP address, so that email service providers like Gmail, Yahoo, or Apple can be able to. Um, so that they can be able to query the place, the IP address that is sending that email, all right? So that um, any time that they observe a particular spam pattern, so that they can be able to ban your IP address immediately and protect their customers, just like me and you that opened uh, Gmail address with them. So this one is done. Though this is not a, a criteria, I'm not just saying that if you do this kind of thing that you are going to get your emails inside the inbox, no. This is just a way of telling uh, email service providers that you are genuine and that you are not a spammer. 
All right. So we already configured this. Um, I will go check if these guys have responded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. I just sorted the issue out now with OGH. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, so share your screen and continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already on my screen right now. So uh, this is where I stopped. Um, I was saying that thank God that massing touch operating system that we already have a command line that, that Mark um, presented us with. So all you have to do is uh, to log into your command line, just go to your Mac, go to this search bar, or you can go to your search for terminal. You can, you can click on terminal and it's going to bring you to this terminal. Once it brings you to this terminal, all you have to do is um, to type SSH. If you type SSH, then you put in the username let me try closing this connection again. Let me see if this issue is going to, if this issue is going to persist. Ubuntu, then we can put um, in our IP address, just put at then your IP address. This is our password. Let me go copy our IP address from this place. Just go to OVH Cloud or any place that you bought your VPS server from. Just copy your IP address. What we want to do is I want to connect to this Linux machine and install poster on it. Then we can paste. Then this is the password. After pasting your VPS machine, uh, IP on the after ads after the ad symbol you are going to now add your password the password to this VPS. For instance, after installing and contacting OVH, look at my new password that was sent to me now. So I have to copy it. You see, this is eight eight fifty. Eight fifty. Yeah, that was when they sent it. Then I will copy, and I'll come to this place. Just right click with your two fingers if you're Mac paste. Don't worry, after pasting the password, it's not going to show for security reasons. Just click on enter. Now, confirm, you're now on the root of your VPS. So what you have to do now is, um, this is the VPS that is presented to you. All you got to do now is to um, request for super user access from OVH class so that you can be able to manage the files in this GPS server, via both command line and FTP. So what you have to do is to type um, sudo passwd. You, you have to run this command, click on enter, and just know that this um, password that you're trying to create now is just super user access password and not the same, it's not the same as the password that you, you used to log in, log into your GPS server in the first place that OVH Cloud gave, gave to you, all right? So I can just choose any random password. Uh, let me just say this. Enter. So boom, I already resetted my password. So another command that you have to run now, just type SU, you click on enter. Then you have to reinsert the password, the unique password I just um, resetted now. Like the password I'll just add the request for the super user access. All right. So now we are now um, in this particular directory on our GPS server, this um, home slash Ubuntu. And what we, what we got to do now, we don't want to install our poster uh, under home slash Ubuntu. We have to say change directory. This is just to bring you to the root of your VPS server. Um, so what we have to do now, I already made a uh, made a, a list of the code that uh, the poster team that they, they already provided that you can use for installing poster SMTP. So what we, all we've got to do now is to go just go and look for those code and copy them and, and run them because they already uh, um, built on Docker and Docker actually uh, came with a lot of containers that are going to help to run most of the applications without us facing any issue. All right. So let me go and look for the poster code. 
I don't think I left it under my download folder. I think, okay, let me check recent. So this is the poster installation code, and I'm going to be able to leave this code for you, should in case anybody needs the code um, during your own personal installation of the, during your own personal installation of uh, poster VPS server, all right? So the first code here is this, the first one. You have to just copy this code, copy from here. You have to make sure you copy everything completely. I know my system is already running very slow. Then just copy this control C. Just come to your to your command line two and write and just double click, then paste. Then allow the code to run. Allow the code to run. This one just finish running. Then just go back to your code again. You can copy this one again. And copy this one again. You click on enter. Then you copy, you copy this one again. You copy at the next one, the next code. You copy the, the third one. You paste it, click on enter. Then you copy the next one. You just pretty much copy and paste, copy and paste, and you'll be able to get your poster SMTP up and running. Uh, paste, begin. Yeah, then you can copy the next one. Come and see. Paste again, enter. Then you allow it to run. Then you can go back again and copy the next command. And paste. We also allow it to run. Just click on. They, they are trying to ask you uh, after this operation that 154 kilobytes of additional disk space will be used. You just have to type Y. You agree. Then after that, then we we move to the next command, control C. Enter. Then we are here. You can copy the next command. You click on enter. Then you allow it to run again. Allow it to run, just allow it to run. Then we copy the next command. This is how we are going. This is these are the steps that Postal actually want us to follow before we can be able to install the, the newest, um, the latest version of Postal, which is built using Docker. This again, enter. Then since the, I already have a lot of, I can actually run another command. I can run clear. I want to, I want to make sure that my screen is actually clear so that I can be able to see what I'm doing. Control C. It's still running. Look at after this operation, 397 MB of additional disk space will be used. Just click on yes. You agree. Then you are green, just allow it to run, allow it to run, allow it to run. Then let's, as it's running, let's prepare the next code, control C. It's still running, it's still running. Let's just allow it to finish.
I think it just finished running. Let me copy the next code. Yeah, and paste again. You click on enter. So the next, uh, you just type Q on your keyboard. All right. Then after typing Q, uh, then copy the next line of code, Control C. Enter. All right, then this is where we are. Then we can copy the next, um, the next code, which is this control C. We can come back again, paste, click on enter, then let's copy the next uh, code again. Control C. Then paste. Enter. Then now, what, what we want to install now, because these are packages that, that is going to run on the Docker, we want to exactly the way it it is here, control C, paste, it's going to paste, just click on enter, then allow it to run. What you're doing now, you're trying to install Docker, then let's install um, RabbitMQ for transportation. Just click hit on enter again and just wait patiently for it. Yeah, then the next um, the next command now is poster uh, poster booster poster dot quickbeautify.com. But look at if you look close, you are going to see poster.quickbeautify.com and if you go to this way if, if we go back to my name cheap account uh, i will try to log in i'll try to log in i will try to log in i don't know Okay, I'm already in here. Okay, whichever, whichever place I'm in here, then I can come to see Quick Beautify. This is advanced DNS, of course. Um, and this is um, mail, mail.this.com. Mail, mail, mail is pointing to this particular IP address. So, and already, I think we've already configured our reverse, our reverse parts. Let me make sure that we configured our reverse part. This is mail.quickbeautify.com. All right, then my name chip. If I go back to to my my destiny, I want I want I want to make sure that this is. I want I want you to understand that you have to use the subdomain of your 
the subdomain that you want to use to host this particular IP address that you, you want to use for this mailing. So all you got to do is to copy this subdomain, to copy this mail. Make sure that what you are replacing, if you come to this place, make sure you're replacing um, this poster now with mail or with any subdomain that you're using for your for your own uh, for your own server all right uh, if you're using some people are using poster if you're using maybe uh if you're using maybe aws here yeah? aws as your subdomain here yeah? then you're going to come to this place and change it to aws then if you're using mail here yeah? just like the way i'm using mail here yeah? you have to come here to change it to mail all right if you're using a poster here yeah? let me just say i said poster yeah then i'm going to come back here to to remove this this and put poster because this is just like a way of us authenticating this server authenticating our domain name with this particular ip address with this with this particular server all right so but in my own case what i want to use for this server is mail all right let me click on save changes then the changes are already saved i can come here and change it again to mail then all i got to do now is to copy the whole of this now mail.quickbeautify.com because quickbeautify is the domain name that i want to use for for this mailing just paste now what we got to do now we we want to authenticate um, our domain very well now. If you still remember very clearly when I say something about um, technical details that you need to configure very well in your in inside your server, this is the time that we're going to generate those technical details, uh, such as the DKIM, the domain key, of course, the parts where I, I talked about the signing of email that your email got to be signed before it reaches the ending the the recipient uh, server to make sure that nobody maybe an email spoofer did not um interrupt the email or change the originality of the email along the way so this is the place that we're going to generate it this is the place that's going to generate our uh, reverse path this is the place that's going to generate our spf record sender policy framework this is the place we are going to generate a whole our MX, ms record too so all you got to do is to copy this this next code that ended uh, with um dot yml Control C. Then paste enter. So once you click on um, enter, it's going to bring you to this particular directory or interface. All you got you got to do is to use your arrow key. It doesn't matter if you're on a window machine or on a Mac operating system, all right? Just come down, come down and look for the DNS um, part, as you can see, my mouse, my mouse is moving. My cursor right there. So move up again. Move up again, then use your right key. Then what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to delete all these. And I'm going to, instead of poster dot, then you're going to put in your host name now or your subdomain, the subdomain that you are using to host to this particular IP address. What you're going to put now is mail dot, then my domain name, my normal domain name, quick. Right. com. Then you go to the next. Then you delete these two. Delete these two and put mail. Just make sure you locate all the places that you have your. You have your. You have. You are supposed to put in your host name. Dot quick. Then come down again, write mail again, 
dot quick and you come down again. So quickbeautify.com, then come down again. Then delete again. Make sure you're replacing everything with your host name. So it's quick. Um. Mail dot quick beautify dot com so i think we we finished um changing everything we finished um everything then all we have to do is to come. then the next thing you have to do now just click just if you are on mark you're going to press uh, um control Control X, and it don't is not a command, not command X. But if you're on Windows, you have to press Y, which is yes. Then you click on Enter. But if you're Mac, you have to click on the Control key, the Control key, not a uh, command key. Control X. Then you click on Y. Then you click on Enter. Then you will still be back at the root of your VPS machine. So the next thing you have to do is to copy the Next line of code, control C, poster initialize. Enter. Then there's a, the last code that we did is to initialize poster. Then we copy one to create an account on poster now. Poster makes super user. This is still running. So we have to allow it to run. So most of the time you need a very strong uh, internet connection for this thing to work perfectly. All right. So initializing the database. So everything I just we just I just want to run clear again to clear this. Then I copy the next line of command or line of code or anything you want to call it. Enter. Now you are trying to create this, um, a postal a postal user all right like the login details i can use to assess this mail transfer agent called poster so first of all what you have to do now is um type in any email address of your choice my own i'm going to type in my uh, one of my gmail address i don't know why command line 2 is not responding very well dot com Then put in your first name. You can actually use your maybe your domain name, just like the way I have Quick Beautify. I can use Quick as the first name or Beautify as the last name, but I just feel like um, it's better to use my name, John. And let me just say Kachi. 
my last name. So then my actually my name. Then you can put in the password that you want to use to access poster now that you want to use to log into poster. Let me use the consistent with my password so that I won't forget any of them. Look at congratulations, user has been created with this email address. Let's check our next uh, our next now. We just finished creating an account using our login details. Paste. Yeah, the next thing we have to do now is um, to install Candy. And Candy is just for um, SSL certificate, certificate and for issuing the DS encrypt so that you won't be able to be renewing your SSL. So that after every 90 days, it will automatically be renewed. All right. Then paste. So this is our host the mail mail host name mail dot quickbeautify dot com. All right. So this is our command line to if you check this code, you see that our code only use this last code because uh, we when we are going to be authenticating our servers very well, that is the time that we're going to be using this SPF, this SPF, like pointing our SPF record and all of that. So this is the place where installation of Poster actually ended. So the next thing you have to do is to come to your browser and uh, type your host name, mail.quickbeautify.com, which is in my own case, then return. Then once you click on return, you have your our our login detail just put in the login details that you you use there the lo the login detail that you use there nana john 2017 in your own case your own name or anything that you put there then login then look at uh, i'm already logged in remember me for two months just like i said at the beginning this is um what poster look like then all, all you have to do is to create your first organization because in this uh, place now there is no you don't have any organization yet or right, i just create your first organization let me just say my first org then we are already progressing to building or configuring our vps server so all all we've done is just to set up Post this this is where the, the main work actually starts. So everybody will got to pay attention at this part. I even take this part more seriously. Click on build your own your your first mail server. Then just type anything. Just give it any name. Just just any demo name. My first mail server. And this is what poster look like. You can come to messages, see domain, see routing. You can actually route emails from poster. This webhook settings. You can you can um, come check um, around the settings to play around the, with the interface of poster. So what we want to do now is to add a domain because if we want to send an email, we need a domain. So click on domain, add your first domain. Then let me add my first domain, which is remember. I set up the SMTP server using Quick Beautify. So I have to add Quick Beautify.com. Quick Beautify.com. So Poster, Poster is actually a very good mail transfer agent because um, as you can see from here, Poster Poster already um, already gave us um, um, 
authentication details, technical details that we can actually add, add to our domain register account to prove to email service providers like Gmail or Yahoo or Outlook that um, um, that we are we are the, we are genuine senders and we are the real owners of our both our email address and our IP address. All right. So what I have, uh, we have to copy this first. And what this particular code is doing, um, it, it, will I say, yeah, I've already explained it before, but it just to authenticate your server and assign this particular IP address. Let me go back to the, with the one nine. It's actually allowed to send emails using your domain. All right. So that is just what SPF is doing. So, that will prevent maybe, like, just like the way my website now is quick beautify, so that another person, remember that I'm doing most of all this configuration inside my domain register account, all right? So, nobody, nobody is going to have access to my domain register account server to send the emails using my own domain name all right so all i got to do is to copy this control c then i can come to my domain register account I pointed this to this particular ip address and this is to tell them that anytime they queried mail dot anything dot uh, mail dot quickbeautify.com is going to resolve to this particular IP address. If I click on add another record, I'm looking for a TS because um, um SPF is actually a TST record, all right? It's actually a text record. So we are going to be adding a text record here. Then paste under the value section, you have to paste the the SPF record that you copied. If you go to this page, you see the, the SPF details that I copied. Yeah, just copy it and paste it there. The host that will save changes, PDK, actually it's already got your in this so that um, you will be able to authenticate your servers very well so that I can reach the, let me just go. Yes. Okay, my network is still going. So this already saved. Let me see if this is going to save. Then as we are still waiting, we can go back to, um, remember what I said that um, um, D can actually do is going to be Protect like Gmail or Yahoo or Outlook. All right, that is just the work of GCAM so that the originality of Gmail will be protected so that email spoofers would, would um, maybe interrupt the email along the way. Um, so, emails that are weird, maybe that fail the particular maybe DKM test or SPF uh, record test, what is going to happen to those emails, whether they are going to be rejected um, or maybe sent automatically to a particular um, email address or maybe sent to spam or anyway. So we've copied this one. Then all we have to do now, we have to copy the next one, the return part. Just know that uh, not all these details are compulsory, but this is just a way of you authenticating your server is very well in order to end the trust of internet service service providers or email service providers and reach the the 
the inbox. So if you look at this uh, return part, you notice that they say this is optional, but remember, uh, but you add the CNAME record at psrop.quickbeautify.com to point to the host name. All right. So this is I'm going to show you the host name. This is the host name. This is the um automatic uh, um, subdomain that is created or given to us by poster, all right, automatically. So we have to copy this one, copy the return path since they told us that it's going to enhance our email deliverability. So I will come here and add another record. And it's a CNAME record. CNAME record, then we can add this. Arupi.mail, arupi.mail.quickbeautify.com. Remember that if you're using uh, maybe poster or maybe a domain, it's not only you have another host name, it's going to be arupi your host name. All right. So then we you can come back here and copy this uh, host name, control C. Then we can come back again and put control C. Key. then save then as we are doing this we got to check if our what we are doing uh, is actually working click on check as you can see this is reflecting the SPF that they are telling us our, that our SPF record is working very fine our DKM is working very fine uh, we are left with the uh, return parts have not propagated then the MS record too we've not added it so so I'll go back now to come to to my MX. I'll copy MS Control C. And what is MS record? MS record is just um, a record that will, that can hello the uh, the word, just like hello word in programming, where you are trying to um, print something on the screen. Like what MS record is doing, um, it helps you to receive email and also to tell. Uh, um, which servers are accepting your email and which one you're receiving, all right? So MS record is just for receiving email. It, deals, it just deals with email, all right? If you don't have your MS record correctly configured, you won't be able to send or receive email. Control C. You copy again. Then we'll come back. Then go back to MX. Remember, if you're using them cheap, first of all, you're email forwarding, it, all these are just um, forms of uh, MS record or something. So remember, each domain name must have at least one MS record attached to it. Like by default, Namecheap is going to be showing you email because we want to customize our, our sending. So all you have to do is to come to this play, look at cost from this play, it already um, have this, it's still going to be at, then this place now, we have to go back to our poster and copy this control C. Control C, then we can come back and paste, control V, mx.mail.quickbitify.com, then the priority two is going to be 10. Then we can save all changes. So, so this is it. Uh, what, what again do we have to configure? We, have, we still have to configure a whole lot of things. And uh, then the, we have to uh, configure DMARC. Um, we are going to set a particular so that. Um, if uh, a particular spam uh, using your own domain name, given that they are not authorized to use your domain name, all right, accept or reject, or you can determine where maybe if um, if a particular domain name fails the particular DMARC test, where the emails are going to be sent. Uh, DMARC is just a technology helping uh, SPF and DK. So um, so sometimes um, uh, DMARC is not always free, but we actually have a free platform. I'm going to show you a free platform where you can be able to generate a, a, a DMARC for free. All right. You have to go to Elastic, Elastic Email DMARC Generator, click on Enter. 
uh, this first one, you can click on it. Then you are going to see generate DMAC. Just click on generate DMAC. You can see uh, this first one. I just want to monitor and receive reports. Then you can click on next. 100% of email will be checked exactly. Um, yes, just don't click on no, just click on yes. Aggregate reports um, are compiled of all email that failed authentication. Then choose yes. This place now, and you are uh, trying to, we are trying to add an email address in which um, any email that is trying to spoof you or any email suspected to be doing that is going to be dumped um on this particular um, uh, um email address the email address we are using here is dmark just type dmark mark at then you have to review the email again then next then See, your DMARC is already generated. Just click on this, copy to clipboard, then come back. Um, then we'll add uh, another test record. TST record, where is our test record? Add the record that you already got. Then what is going to be hosting this DMARC? We are going to have DMARC as the host uh, underscore. This is what is going to be the host. Then click on save changes. So there are still a lot of authentication that we have to do. There are still a lot, a lot of authentications. If we go back to this place, let's first of all, check our DNS records are, co are correct. If you look at this, you see that everything is showing uh, perfect or that there is no error message at all. So if you look at this place, you're going to notice that Postal actually created, when they were giving us um, this return part record, automatically they created PSROP as a subdomain to quickbeautify.com. So what we have to do since PSROP is hosting rop.mail.quickbeautify.com as the return part, um, to provide that you're not a spammer, you need to point this PSROP uh, to your postal domain, your postal IP address, all right? Because if this um, return path should be hosted by PSROP, first of all, let's click on save change. Let this one save first. Then you can add another one. can point it to this IP to save changes. So let's look for another thing that we can do. I think this server is good to go. Okay, before I forget, we there's what we call Google Postmaster tools. All right, um, this is a um, a kind of you sharing your domain name with Google for them to monitor your send send uh, uh, sending reputation. All right, uh, just go to Google and type uh, Google, okay Google Postmaster two Postmaster two. Then this first link, just click on it. You just click on get started. See, I already verified this one. Let me remove it again. Delete domain. Delete. It's already deleted. So what I have to do now, what I have to do now is to add a new domain. Add. Then quick. Quickgratify.com. Uh, Quickgratify.com has been added to your verified domain done because i already verified this domain so 
what you have to do is um post now um google postmaster too they're going to give you a text record just like when we generated they're going to give you a code like this just like this after we generate just like this all you got to do is to copy it just like the way we copy this one and it's a test record and after copying it you have to come back to your to, to your domain register account and uh, click on add add record then you come and choose tst and what is going to host it this time around is ads then you can this is google site verification this is it this is the one I used for verifying my domain before for this this domain, this particular domain. So this is a kind of uh, code that you're going to see after uh, adding your website to Google Postmaster tools. All right. So just click on save changes. So we are virtually done with setting up our SMTP server and configuring um, our both our domain name with our IP address to in order to authenticate our uh, domain name very well to tell uh, email service providers that we are not actually spammers and that we are genuine. All right. So what we have to do now is to go to a website called uh, Mail Mail Tester Mail Tester. So this is like a temporary email address that we can copy. If you copy this uh, temporary email, we can come back to poster. We can come back to poster and come to messages. Then we can come to send messages. Then this is a text email address already created by for us by poster. If you if you okay, first of all, let's try um, click on send. You see this. Hard field. So we don't really know what is wrong, but let me try control V. Let me try our test mail first. Let's see if it's going to let's reload. You see it's sent. This email is sent. All right. This email is sent. Uh, if we go to our and click on change score. This is eight point is over nine and um, if any anything that you this is your like your sending score this is your sending score for this uh, server 8.8 and there are still some things that we have to do um not fully authenticated uh, uh sp psrp does not allow your server to use Okay, you are going to be able to see any error that your server is facing. But most of the times, if you have a new domain name, just like the way I have quick beautify, you're not going to get 10 over 10 sending score. All right, uh, because your domain is actually new. You do domain actually need to build a good reputation on the internet. This software, all these online software can't just give you 10 over 10 like that. All right, now let's check our um, to see if there is no other thing, there is no other thing. Then we can have um, Arupi. Yes, 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 I remember Arupi. We can go back. Uh, we can go back uh, under domains, setup. So you can copy you can actually copy this again control c and this is uh, we can actually point this rop to our our postal smtp our postal server given that it's also automatically created control v they just add it to click on save changes let's remove this first 
So what again? What again? What again? I think we are we are good to go. This eight point. So before I forget, we have another um. Look at this um, SPF. See, look at our SPF. We have to copy this SPF, this sender policy framework uh, code. Control C. I would have forgotten rather. Then you can come back here again and click on a uh, text record since um, SPF record is actually a test record. You can come here and choose a test record. You can add this here. The only difference is that if you look at my VPS IP, you're going to see um, you're going to see this IP address. You're going to see this IP address. 51.195.219.19. This is my IP address. So you, after uh, leaving this code for you, during your own setup, you're going to, what you just have to do is to simply replace this postal, uh, this uh, uh, IP address with your own uh, server IP address, like Control V. You just add your own server IP there. Control Z again. So after adding your own server IP address there, then you copy it and and save it and save um and click on save changes. Then what is going to be the host now? We if you go back to our poster server, let me check um what we should use. Then arupi.mail. This arupi.mail. Control C. You don't actually have then arupi.mail is going to host to this particular then save changes. So we are done, we are technically done uh, setting up our SMTP server. Let's try, let's close this tab. Mail test. Uh, let's check this. Let's check our server again. Copy this test mail. And let's go back. Then come to messages. Send messages. You can put in this new test email. Click on send. Reload, sent, as you can see, sent. You come to this place and recheck. As you can see, our server is now 10 over 10. It is now 10 over 10. So um, the next thing we have to do now is because after setting up um, this SMTP server, the next thing is how to, let, let's, let's try rechecking this so that let it not be a couch of, of my system that is making it to maybe to seem as though there is 10 over 10 or something. Send message. Let's add the email address again. Control V. Then reload. If we reload this server, as you can see, it's sent again. If I click on check, okay, let me close all this. If you can check your score, this is 10 over 10. This is 10 over 10. Everything is authenticated. So we are literally done with the technical part of setting up the SMTP server. And this is how you can actually set up your SMTP server. So the question now is how do you... Um, maybe send emails using uh, this poster SMTP server. So this place now, what you have to do, let me reload this. Look at now, look at our bounce rate is very, very high. And this is very, very bad for, for your email or domain reputation or the, the reputation of this IP address. All right, so you try as much as you can for your bounce rate not to be, not to be very high.
Let's see. Okay, look at look at the error that I'm trying to send to a Gmail address, and look, this is the error that they are telling me. This particular IP address sending message does not have a a, a PTR record setup. I think we are getting something. We are getting an error. Uh, let's try to fix that immediately. Of course, I've already set the PTR record, so. I don't really know what is wrong, but but that is actually fixable. No, yeah. If we go back, so maybe I should. Delete this and, and re add it. So let me try another email address. Let me try a Gmail, a, a Yahoo mail address. I do think I have. A Yahoo account. Go to send message again. Twenty seventeen at the Yahoo dot com. I don't. I don't really know if. If I have a Yahoo account, yeah, I actually have a Yahoo account. So this is showing us sent. So this email is already sent to my to my Yahoo account. So so how do we um, integrate this poster with email marketing applications, just like maybe Mailways or Mautic? So first of all, we go to um, create um, poster credentials. We have to create credentials that we can use. Um, to connect with our marketing application, such as Mautic. So what we've got to do is, be, okay, before we do that, let's create route. So first of all, we need to add an address endpoint. Since poster cannot receive um, an email on its own, it has to be routed to an external server or let's install it with an application, just like the way it should when we are starting out. So just add an address endpoint. Let me say, what is the email? Okay, let me add my personal email. Let me add my personal email. Um, if I still remember clearly, at gayinsights.com. So then this is the place where I can now add um, any email address I want to use to send email. Let me just say send. Then, then I can choose this domain. If you have more than one domain on Postal, I already told you that um, you can add more than one domain on Postal. Just choose this. Then you can then choose the address endpoint. After choosing the address endpoint, just click on route. So we just routed our email now. And the next thing you have to do is to create your Postal credentials. Add your first credentials. So this place, we have varieties of options that we can go with. We can go with SMTP, we can go with the uh, uh, SMTP, uh, we can go with API. For instance, I think there was a time I made a tutorial um, on my blog about, about this. Let me check my blog. This is actually my blog. And um, I already talked about setting up poster SMTP on my blog. But just that it's not um, using Mautic, all right? But this can be done with Mautic too. Let me try finding the blog post. So this is the blog post, Poster SMTP Setup Guide. If you open this, you're going to see the full guide.
So even even all the code that um you can actually come that even reminds me you can actually come to this place instead of um requesting for the code actually I can drop you with Toby so you can actually come to this place and uh, and copy your and copy all the code all the code that I talked about you see poster star poster makes super user um, poster initialize you can actually come to this place and and literally copy all the could I already talked about this just that um this particular tutorial is just connecting with um mailways but the same way we could that we can connect with mailways just the same way we can also connect uh, with the uh, with the uh, Mautic too then you can just um say any name let me just say test so this is these are the credentials that you already created so you go into your email marketing application. These are, this is now the credential that you can use uh, to add to your email marketing application and start sending your emails. All right. So this is it about uh, setting up your own postal SMTP server and connecting with um, with any external um, email marketing application, email automation too. All right. And uh, I think this has actually gotten very, very long. And uh, we are not going to connect these credentials to Mautic this net. Maybe in a, another of our meetup, I'm going to connect uh, these postal um, credentials um, with our um, with our um, um, with our, our Mautic software. All right. So this is just literally just it. All right. Um, and what again? I think we are pretty much done with this. Then let's let's quickly talk about. Let's quickly talk about. Let's quickly talk about um, uh, how we can be able to reach the inbox. So this is just a new SMTP server that we just created. So how are we going to be able to reach the inbox? Look at what happened here. Some of the emails are, are showing hard field. If you go to this, you see that some of the emails are showing hard field, and it led to a high bounce rate. So this is what you go to to run away from as much as you can. So make sure that your server does not have a high bounce rate. And how does how, how do you ensure that your server does not have a high bounce rate? You can do that by making sure that you're sending to a, a genuine email, by making sure that you're sending to genuine emails. So for instance, uh, you need to um, validate your email list very well. Um, you don't have to maybe buy these maybe buy this there from the internet, or maybe script email, emails from the web, because most of those emails are actually spam traps uh, put by uh, email service provider in order to capture uh, spammers, all right? And immediately you, you get all those emails and use it to test, test out your SMTP server. All those, uh, you, your email is going to, your, your, your server is going to have a very high bounce rate and it's not going to be good for your reputation. All right, so that is that about the um, about, uh, bounce rate. They just make sure that your bounce rate is very low. Then the next thing you have to do is warming up. Then what is the concept of warming up? Warming up is the process of you um, building reputation. Like the first, uh, like after building this SMTP server, first of all, you first of all send maybe 20 emails your first day. The second day, you send the uh, 50 emails. The third day you send 100 emails. The fourth day you send 150. The fourth, the fifth day you send like 300. The sixth day you send uh, like 800. Just like that, you keep on wrapping up volume to um, email service providers read your pattern of sending emails in order to consider your emails to reaching the inbox. All right. So that is that about. Um, about uh, yeah another thing you can you can do to make sure that your email reaches the inbox is your recipient interaction make sure that when you're warming up your smtp server make sure you're sending to um to your active subscribers all right because if you don't send to your active subscribers um they, if you are sending to people that are going to be reporting your emails as spam or anything yeah, you are going to have a very hard time reaching the inbox because that is sending email uh, messages to email service providers that
that is sending messages to email service providers that um, people that you're sending emails to, they don't actually consent to you sending them emails. So you have to make sure that, um, that you are sending to your real followers and people that love your content and people that are responding to your content, all right? So that is that about the uh, uh, recipient interaction, sending score, we already talked about sending score and those are what we did on this place. Those are what we configured. Uh, where is our domain register account on this place? Those are what we configured here. Everything we configured here. So those are those. those this place, they, they, it, it constitutes uh, your sending score. Then, though this particular tutorial, we actually use one IP address. So, so IP rotation. You don't have to during your warm up. You don't have to be rotating your IP address with your domain name. Make sure that you. You, you finish warming up the first IP address before you switch to another IP if you intend to be sending emails using multiple IP addresses. All right, that is that about IP rotation. Make sure during your warm up, uh, you finish warming up a particular IP address before you move to another IP address, then before you move to another IP address. And you don't necessarily have to, you can actually do all these things manually. I do do my manually, but if you want to automate uh, this process, we have a lot of tools online. I don't know why my screen is no more sharing, but I will just I will just try to mention the service here. Warm up inbox. Just type warm up. Just go to google.com and type warm up inbox. You'll be able to you'll be able to see um, warm up inbox. It's actually a service that can help you to warm up your SMTP server. All right, instead of doing it manually, and some of them are actually very very much efficient. Then another thing you can do is um, when you're during your warm up uh, process, you need to make sure you add the uh, unsubscribe link and your email signature. All right, so that and also maybe if you are sending as a company as a small business, you can add the address the ad address where you're sending from. These uh, also send uh, messages to email service providers that you are legit, that you are not trying to hide anything, that you actually want people, maybe if people don't like the emails that you're sending them, they can actually unsubscribe from your from your list. Or maybe they, they can actually know your the address where you're sending from. Though the, 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 the most important uh, one that uh, email service providers are, are more concerned about because anybody can actually lie about their location. So the, the one that they are actually more interested in is you adding your subscribe link. So make sure you add on subscribe if link, even when you're not warming up your SMTP server, or even when you're sending using maybe email marketing companies like uh, like um, maybe MailChimp, uh, GetResponse, and all those services. Make sure you add on subscribe link because you'll be daunting the reputation of the IP address because they're also sending through an IP address. All right. Then another thing is you have to build a good a followership online to make your warm up process because for you to warm up, like let me say ten thousand, like ten thousand list. Another another thing is to build a real followership online. All right, because maybe if you have maybe five thousand people following you who are your diehard fan. Uh, online or of, of your maybe or your product or your service or your blog or your website even if you build an smtp server or any any server at all uh, you can they can be able to uh, to maybe if your emails land in the spam because new servers automatically they will be going to the spam folder because uh, nobody knows the IP addresses on the internet and you go to build reputation from the ground. So when people that actually love your content, you send out all those emails during warm-up process, they will be able to uh, report your emails at, as non-spam and by that you'll be able to build a, uh, you'll be able to build a um, reputation faster on the internet. And another way you can do it is just to add them. You can actually ask them to to also um, help you report your emails as non-spam because this is this is a kind of a, report, a reporting concept that you're, you're doing. You can actually tell them if you're in good terms with your followers, you can tell them to report your emails as non-spam. So another thing you can also do to make sure your emails, and this is not just a matter, a matter of um, specific to SMTP server. If you already have maybe a third party SMTP like Melgon, uh, maybe AWS. 
Amazon AW, uh, uh, Amazon Web Services. You can also practice all this so that you can actually maintain good reputation, especially when you're using their maybe their dedicated IP address. You can actually make sure you you implement all these things in order to to make sure that your emails are delivering inside the inbox. So another thing you must ensure is a good subject line and email body. So make sure you, because today today AI is very, very, well, let's say AI has been beginning to replace human beings to some extent. Um, uh, so after billions and billions of emails are analyzed by all these uh, email service providers like Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, so they have come to develop algorithms that can help to automatically detect the uh, spam. So anytime you write maybe a spammy uh, subject, like buy something now, I have something for you. Those kind of curious headlines that are going to automatically uh, uh, send your emails to maybe promotion tab or maybe spam folder, given that uh, um, given that uh, they've already analyzed a particular spam pattern because that is how they just concluded that that is how spammers behave. So you need to use a lot of safety, a lot of uh, email subject line testers on the internet. If you just type now email subject line tester, you'll be able to see a lot of email subject line testers. They, as I'm saying this, let me try searching for one. Subject line Okay, let me just put email subject line tester. Subject line tester. So look at a lot of a lot of them. I, I, you can use any of them. So anything anything you want to test, you can maybe let me just say I have a gift. For you. So you see that this this service is going to give you a particular percentage of um, um, look at what they say. Now is a few small tweaks and you are good to go. See below for suggestion on how to make your subject line more impactful. So what I'm just trying to say that you don't have to use uh, maybe uh, words that are very very super salesy in nature when you're writing your subject lines. The same thing goes with your, with your, the body of your emails too. The same thing goes with the body of your emails. Make sure that you are also avoiding uh, some kind of, uh, maybe, maybe inside your email you're writing, uh, grab this discount now, or all those kind of salesy words. So you have to make sure you run away from all those kind of things. So I think with all these practices, you will be able to, after your warm up and you're able to monitor your recipient interaction, make sure you, there, there are a lot of softwares out there, including Mautic, you can track clicks, you can track opens, people that open, uh, how many people that opens your email. Like I do keep track of the number of persons that opened my email within the last two months. So I'll just do an evaluation. People that have not opened my email the last three months, I'm going to automatically remove them from my list because they are daunting the reputation of my IP address and my mailing server. All right. So um, the same thing goes with uh, maybe splitting your campaign. This is also another way of making sure that you warm up your uh, SMTP or your uh, dedicated IP very, very fast. Uh, splitting your campaign between your server and the premium SMTP. So uh, when you build your SMTP server uh, newly, you can to make sure that to, 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 to make the warm up process more faster, you can actually um, you can actually um, split the campaign between the warm-up process between a premium SMTP and your own SMTP. This is what I'm saying. Like if you build a new SMTP server, you can divide with, in your domain. You can actually use your domain to maybe you can purchase, if you purchase a new domain, given that the new domain that you use it for building your SMTP server. So you can use that same domain to send emails to uh, you, you send emails using uh, maybe Amazon SES, um, maybe Mailgun because you know that the IPs are already the IPs already have some kind of reputations online. 
So after um, doing that, then you can also split another one that you can be sending using that, that your server, all right? So the, the IPs from Melgon or Amazon SCS are going to give a reputation to your own domain name Why you also um, build reputation uh, gradually using your own IP address. So this is it about uh, this tutorial. And uh, I do hope that next month we are going to be able to connect uh, all these uh, postal credentials to our multi can send our first uh, emails. Uh, I'm very, very happy um, shooting this tutorial. And uh, I thank uh, uh, the convenors of multi for inviting me to express my my little knowledge on email deliverability. So, and thanks to Kobe too and all the multi community and everybody that stood up to this hour. We are very, very sorry that I had um, some technical issues at the beginning. Um, it was due to some kind of restrictions from creation that I was able to sort it out later and I was able to reach to this point in this tutorial. I'm very, very happy to meet everybody and see you all next month. Thank you and bye-bye. Uh, John? Before you go, yeah. All right, thank you so much. Let me appreciate your effort. Thank you so much. Just one question to ask you. Okay, so the question have to do with if you have a if you already have an existing maybe email service provider, maybe for your normal email communication, maybe like Zoho or Google, and you want to also use Postal. Is it like you have to now move your do you need to move your regular email to postal or what do you suggest? Come here, please come again so that I will, I will get to very clear. If you, if, you you have a, if you have a private email, maybe from from maybe G, G Suite or uh, yeah, uh, Google Workspace or Zoho, and you also want to use postal, what do you advise in that aspect? Uh, you can you can actually do you can actually do it just I have to get a domain for your your poster. What we're going to do, you see the place I added, I don't know if my yeah, my screen my screen is still on. See the place I added yes. I, I, I added a route. Come to the what you're going to do is actually possible. If you click on this route now, are you are you seeing my screen? Yes. You can actually add any email from from maybe Google Workspace. You, uh, under this routing part, the, the 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 meaning of this routing part is that any email coming from coming to send at quickbeautify.com should be forwarded to affiliate at jinside.com. You see that this is a separate domain name. You get. Okay, John. Let me ask my question again. So my question is that you already have your regular email sending provider. Maybe you use Zoho or Google. Um, Google Workspace, right? And then you also want to use Postal for sending mass messages. I don't want to use your Google, or you don't want to use your Zoho. So what do you recommend in that aspect? So your Zoho is your Zoho or Google Workspace is for your normal business communication, okay. internal communication with your client. Why Postal is for newsletter, for trying to send automated emails okay so what we have advice in that particular aspect for running a campaign uh for installing do you advise having the two or okay. do you advise installing one on the subdomain or what we advise we can actually have the two because um when you are when you have your private uh, smtp you're prone to to be blacklisted, all right. So I don't know if you get your point to be blacklisted. That is the reason why we are going with a separate, a separate domain name to even start with. You get. So I advise okay. that you, I I advise that you go separately. That you have your 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 normal business email email. Then you can have this one for running your mass campaign. All right. Thank you so much for your time, John. I know we've taken so much of your time this evening. Uh, we'll be sync up later and then see what we can be able to go on from here. Thank you once again and do have a wonderful night, friends. Bye for now.
Yeah, thank you very much. God bless you.